We, as Americans, have the capacity now, as we've had in the past, to do whatever needs to be done to preserve this last and greatest bastion of freedom. In this present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. In 1981, President Ronald Reagan took the presidential oath to become the 40th president of the United States of America. At a time where economic woes affected the American people, Ronald Reagan came to alleviate that pressure from all who suffered. Ronald Reagan made policies that affected the nation both domestically and internationally. Though hailed as a hero, Ronald Reagan strikes a great divide in his inauguration speech with these words, Government is not the solution. Government is the problem. Looking at the time period where great struggles existed between the international powers of the U.S. and the U.S.S.R., it is easy to see how government could be the problem. Though in light of all this, Ronald Reagan attacks at the failure of the American government and how it has not been governing the people. Instead, we are brought with the idea that the government is too controlling. Fast forward to 2010. A struggling video game designer has left his successful job working for one of the biggest industries in the market, Naughty Dog, the company responsible for the critically acclaimed video game series of Uncharted. This artist believed that by creating these games, he was following a formulaic system that kept looping over and over again. He decided to leave Naughty Dog and develop his own game independently. His name is Lucas Pope, and this is the story of how Papers, Please! broke the independent game developer scene. Papers, Please! is a game where you're tasked with checking passports at a security checkpoint. Set in 1982, you work for the country of Arstratska, who has just finished a six-year-long war with its neighboring countries. Your goal is to check papers to allow people into the country of Arstratska. If everything is legit, then you let them go through, but if their passport is out of date or they are missing key pieces of paperwork, you turn them away. Your paycheck is earned by the number of people you process provided you are making the right calls. At the end of the day, you get to spend it on food, medicine, and rent for your family. This may sound easy enough, but it starts to pile on you quickly. Every day the government adds new laws for checking people's passports, and then they start introducing new paperwork that is associated with the passports. This all adds up into more time to process each individual person. Your rent is going up, your family is getting sick, and you can barely make enough money to make ends meet. Everything is stacked against you, and the government keeps applying this pressure. So you look for outside alternatives. This man will give you extra money for detaining people even if they may not deserve it. This other man asks to let his wife be through behind him, but she does not have the appropriate paperwork. You can lose money if you let her go through. Choices like these arise throughout the game, and it is easy to see why the government is the problem. They have been putting this pressure on you, and you have to deal with the foreign masses waiting in line to pass through. You can choose to join a rebellion, which can either go favorably or poorly depending on your actions to aid them. The game pushes the limits of your morality by either choosing to let people go or just doing your job to save your own skin. In an age where government regulation is filled, government becomes the problem, not the solution. Papers, Please! redefined the indie game scene. With its release, both critics and users agreed that this was a game that caused the player to really think deeply about their actions. Not just by checking papers to uncover discrepancies, but by showing what a world might look like with government control. A world that is gray, with muddled moralities on who to let pass and who to deny entrance. Papers, Please! lives to show how human morality can be pushed. If a government forces a population, then a population must force it back. Ronald Reagan does not end his speech with those hallowed words, but instead offers the solution 
to the problem. If we look to the answer as to why for so many years we achieved so much, prospered as no other people on earth, it was because here in this land we unleashed the energy and individual genius of man to a greater extent than has ever been done before. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. As video games have developed into an art form of conveying political tensions in an interactive manner, consumers have been able to question the world around them. What is really going on globally outside our comfort zones? What is truly happening behind closed doors that we cannot see? How will decisions that are made for us impact our daily lives? All of these questions promote an inquisitive mentality to ask questions and keep asking them. Ronald Reagan promotes the ideas of a government ruled by the people, not one ruled by corporate offices. Papers, Please shows how a corporate government can be the folly of man and cause a rift in human rights. Only when borders are broken between corporate government and a people's government can we remain whole in life. As Ronald Reagan said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. <laughs>